All right, so the next thing I want to show you is how you can customize the view of nav a little bit. So firstly, you can uh, we can look at the columns here, and this this uh, this functionality applies to all columns throughout nav. And the first thing you can do is you can choose how high it should be. Uh, by default, it's actually only one line high, so it can be really convenient to go in here and make it to uh, to three lines high. It's also really convenient if you could just apply this to all uh, lists in nav so you don't have to do it every single time you see a new list. Um, and the button for doing that is here. So apply to all lists. Do you want to apply to all li yeah, lists? Yes, please. So that means that whenever we go to another list, if we go to, let's say, our cus uh, customers, for example, <coughs> we will see that it's, uh, it's in three lines. So that's, uh, that's convenient. All right, so the next thing we can have a look at is how you can customize the ribbon up here. So basically you can add and remove different uh, elements or different buttons up here. This can be uh, good if, uh, if, if you're missing a button up here which you are expecting to be there. The way to do that is to click this blue drop down up here and select customize. You can then select, select customize ribbon, and let's let's start by re actually removing a button. So if you go process, you see this process relates to this uh, process down here, and we have three buttons in this one, all uh, reflected with these three buttons over here. So if we, re we remove the recurring journal, and click uh, remove, and then click OK we'll see that it, uh, it's, it's removed or it disappears from here. So the other way around, if we want to add it, customize and then customize ribbon. And uh, I happen to know that it's, uh, it lies down here in periodic activities. Um, so you click it, recurring journal, and then you say where you want it. We could actually just put it in, in anywhere where we, where we want it, but let's just put it back in the process menu. So you click, uh, highlight the process and click add. And if we go out, it's been uh, added again. So next I want to show you a really central concept in NAV called filters. And um, if we go into our chart of accounts, we, can, we are already seeing it here, and we, we drill down into our uh, general ledger entries by clicking here. We will see actually um, a filtered view of our general ledger entries. So if you click this button up here, you get a few more options, um, the, the filter section here. And we can actually see that right now it, it has already set a filter so that we are only what, viewing the, the general ledger entries related to this account 1030. So let's just view all the general ledger entries that have ever been produced in, the, in, in our system. So we remove the filter and because we just started this company we have only uh, a, few, a few lines. But this, this is actually an unfiltered view of all our GL entries. So let's uh, imagine you have a, a list of maybe 10,000 records or even just 100 records and you want to um, um, do a little bit of investigation about, uh, you want to pull out a, a particular segment of these, of these lines. So let's say we want to view, for example, only the lines that have invoice in document type. So you would click Add Filter and then you would click Document Type here, Document Type. And then you would say, well, I actually only want to view the general ledger entries which have invoice as type. There you go. And maybe sometimes you want to add more filters to limit this um, further. Um, what you can see actually when you take the uh, watch or show the drop down for, from the filters here is that you have other, um, other fields that you can uh, put the filter on. You actually have quite a lot. In fact, you have all the all the fields that lie behind uh, this table. So, one uh, one example could be we want to set a filter on the on a a field called debit amount. Um, you can also set it on credit amount. But let's just uh, choose one of these that we can actually see. So, 
let's assume we want to um, let's assume we want to have all all the filters set for something in document number saying something with uh, SAL. So we'll choose document number here. And then we have to set a somewhat uh, special um, filter because we only indicated that we want the uh, the lines which says something with SAL. So what happens if we just say SAL and click enter? Well everything disappears and the reason for that is that in the document number um, we actually don't have any entries that are only SAL because we do have some which are S SAL 001 so let's try to see if, uh, if that will work so that was a little bit better um, if we want to if we want to indicate to nav that we are we want something uh, which just only uh, includes SAL we would have to specify a wildcard and a wildcard looks like this so if we click enter we will still see all the SAL here so let's remove this for a brief moment and let's try to set a filter we'll, we'll remove this as well so let's try to set a filter for um, any any entry which has cost in the description. So assume that you, you want to see all the entries that have cost in the description. Let's try to set a filter for that. So you say add filter and you say description here. And then you write, let's just uh, say COST. Let's try that. Well, that didn't work because there are, there are none which have only cost. But what if you set a wildcard? Will that fix the problem? Actually, it wouldn't because um, the entries we have in our line have something in front of the cost uh, description. So maybe if we set another, another wildcard, maybe that will work. Yes, that worked. So now we are saying that we want to see all the lines which have cost somewhere in the description. <clears throat> if you change this C to a small C, it actually doesn't show you anything. And that is because in the text, uh, in a field like description, the, the, the search is case sensitive. So if you want to indica indicate to nav that you don't really care about whether the C is capitalized or not, you have to set a, an, an at in front of it, like this. That means that nav will show you both um, those that are. All right, so let's get uh, rid of this filter and let me show you some other filters which apply to numbers. So if we, if we put a filter to the entry number column here, like this, and let's say we only want to see um, entry number four, um, it will show us entry only number four. But if we want to see also entry number six, we'll have to make one of these vertical lines and then say six. So now we're showing both four and six. And of course we can extend this to also view uh, entry number eight. Then we have uh, the small and bigger options. So we can say we want, uh, we want to see something which is smaller than six, which is this uh, sign. And we can also see, say that we want to see everything which is bigger than six, which is this sign. And of course, as you might have noticed, we can combine several filters. So we can say we want to say everything that's above six, um, but is on GL account 1030. Ten thirty, like like this. Apparently, there's only one. So um, that does it for the filters.